let's start class today. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you some eyeshadow do's and don'ts. I have all the don'ts on this side, obviously, and all the do's on this side. Can you tell? I hope so. So if you're having some trouble with blending or just eyeshadow in general and brushes, don't worry, I got you. If you do any of these things that I'm saying are wrong, don't worry. If you're happy with it, then keep doing it. I'm just giving you suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you can be part of the quad family. And if you wanna learn some do's and don'ts on eyeshadow, then keep watching. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is priming your eyes. Don't not prime your eye. So this is gonna be my eye that I don't prime. It's gonna be bare. If I leave it like this, there might be some oils on my skin that are gonna mix into the eyeshadow and make it just really difficult to blend. The eyeshadow is not gonna look as vibrant and it's probably not gonna last that long. On the do side, I would suggest you guys to prime your eye. Now, I personally rather use a concealer than a primer, but if you want to use a primer, I have some suggestions for you guys. Pro Longwear Paint Pot in Soft Ochre from MAC or the Too Faced Shadow Insurance is also good. I prefer to use concealer over shadow bases just because concealers are a little bit more hydrating. If you already have dry skin, it may intensify the flakiness and the dryness and the lines in your face. But the ones that I suggested to you are pretty good. I just, they are a little bit drying for my skin type. But I do always use a concealer to prime my eyes. And if I'm using a concealer, it's usually gonna be the one I use under my eyes, something that doesn't crease. So I use either the Tarte shape tape or the NARS Radiant Creamy. I go back and forth between them. If you're looking for a good drugstore, um, I would suggest the Maybelline Master Conceal. This is really, really good for concealing and also for um, priming your eyes. I'm gonna use a little bit of the Tarte Shape Tape. Just use a little dot of it and then just blend it in. And I'm working it in with a beauty blender and using these bouncing motions is gonna make sure that it's going on flawless, smooth, and your eyeshadow is just gonna look like a nice, even canvas. And if you need to clean up your brows, you can clean those up too. After, I like to take a face powder or um, an eyeshadow that's similar to my natural skin tone. And what this will do is just set your shadow in place and also fill in any lines so it's sitting on top of a smooth surface. It's gonna help your brush glide onto your eyelid super smooth. The next don't is don't start off with a dark shadow in your crease. Going in with the darker color is gonna make it really hard to blend out, and it's also gonna look very harsh. Also, I'm using this densely packed brush, and I just dug it into the eyeshadow. That's only gonna make it way harder to blend if you have blending problems already. This is just gonna make it worse. There's no coming back from this guy. Do start off with a transition shade that is in the shade range that you're going with. I'm gonna tap off the excess because you don't want too much product on your brush or any hair, so I'll take that hair off in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this tapered brush right here, and I'm gonna use a light hand, so I'm gonna keep my hand towards the back of the brush, and I'm gonna use back and forth motions. Literally just the tip of the brush is gliding on the skin. I'm using this tapered brush. It's gonna make it a lot easier to find the crease and to blend into the crease. And you just wanna use a little bit at a time. You wanna start off with a light shade and then gradually get darker so you have that nice gradient. You want it to look nice and airy, kind of airbrushed. And your crease is right above the lid, so stay right in there. But I really like to use more than one transition shade to get that gradient look. I would suggest you use two to three eyeshadows in your crease. That I know that might be a lot for you guys, but if you really want that nice smooth look, Look, this is just something that always works for me. Start off with this really light shade right here, and the next shade I'm taking is Smitten. I'm gonna use the same brush because I'm not gonna go back into this one. Tap off the excess, and then I'm gonna go into my crease right below the other shade, and with very light pressure, go back and forth, or windshield wiper, whichever works best for you, and slowly build up that intensity. The next thing we're gonna talk about is adding dimension to your crease. We are still in the crease there's a lot that we need to know about the crease. So when you add dimension, you wanna use a darker shade, something that is matte. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the darkish, the darkish. I'm gonna go ahead and use the darkest brown in the palette, which is Sweet. So on the don't side, I'm gonna go in with this big fluffy brush to add dimension to our eye, which obviously this is the definite don't. You don't wanna use something that's too big and fluffy. It's just gonna make the product go everywhere rather than getting that precise area. So don't go in with a lot of product at once with the wrong brush. 
do go in with a small precision brush that is tapered towards the end so it does give you that precision. I like this one from Morphe, it's the M507. I like to also use this on my lower lash line. So I'm just tapping my brush in the shadow and then I'm also tapping the excess off. So I'm starting with just a small amount at a time and I'm holding my brush a little bit closer to the bristle because I want to add a little bit more pressure in a precise area. So I'm just gonna use these circular motions and kind of go and follow my outer V. Remember that shadow gets buried down right into the brush, so you'll always have enough shadow to work with. Once you feel like you absolutely have nothing else on your brush, then you can add a little bit more at a time, but still patting off the excess. You wanna slowly add on and not pack on all at once. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is blending your eyeshadow. So after this is all said and done, you still wanna go back over with a clean blending brush. So here are two brushes. This one's densely packed and dome-shaped. This one, the bristles are a little bit more free towards the top. You want your blending brushes to always be fluffy and clean. So on the don't side, I'm gonna try to blend this out as best as I can. So don't hold the brush too close to the handle. This is gonna make it really hard to blend and the outcome may seem super hard, but you do wanna use a fluffy brush. Hold your brush towards the back of the handle. This is gonna help your brush lightly glide over your shadow, giving it that airbrush effect and making your eyeshadow look unblended. For the lid, I'm gonna use a really pretty color. This is from Makeup Geek, it's called In The Spotlight. Don't use a fluffy brush to apply your lid color because it's just gonna get everywhere, especially if it's a shimmer that you want on the lid. Do use a densely packed shadow brush like this one so you can get the shadow on in the precise area that you want without making it fluff and fly everywhere all over your face. So now we're gonna highlight our brow bone and on the don't side, I'm gonna go in with a glittery pressed powder. This is from Morphe, it's the Mimosa Sunday shade. I'm using the right brush, but it's just way too much, way too glittery and just too much. Actually, some shimmers on the brow bone look really nice. If you use them just below the arm side, I'm going in with a matte bone color and I'm gonna blend it down into the other colors so that it transitions nicely and the whole look is really smooth. And if you brought your dark crease color up too high, you can always clean it up. So now we're gonna talk about balancing out your eyeshadow, adding something on the lower lash line to redefine that lower lash line. Don't go in with a super dark shadow on your lower lash line and just keep going lower and lower because it's literally gonna look like you're dragging your eye down and like you haven't gotten sleep in about 10 years. Do use a transition shade, just like we did with the crease, we layered on, we started off with a light shadow went a slightly darker and darker and darker until you got the intensity that you wanted. You basically want to do the same thing with the lower lash line, just redefining and balancing out your eyeshadow. Another don't is don't set your face makeup before you do your eyeshadow because if you have any mess ups or want to clean up anything, it's going to be really hard to clean after you have powder and cream. Powder on top of a cream is basically locking it in place and if you move that around, it's, it's a messy sight. It's a scary sight to see. It's not easy to deal with and it's just not fun at all. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up. And also, if you do any of the don'ts, let me know below because I know I did all of them. Also, my other videos will be to the side if you wanna check them out and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And if nobody's told you today, I love you, you're amazing, and that's pretty much it. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, Dolly.